Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's Kids Church. Now before we do anything else this morning, I want to give you an update about our harvest collection. Now you remember that we were collecting for the Western Fable Centre Food Bank who provide people food for those that are struggling to pay for their own. We looked at the Bible verse from Hebrews which says don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. Now you really put that bit of the Bible into action and it was lovely to see so many of you in person after so long. A great big thank you to everyone who donated either by coming down while I was in the car park or taking your donation into the shop. Thanks Kath for collecting all of that and also a mention and a thank you to Fairfield School who made our kids church collection into their harvest project. See, even though we're small, we can make a big difference when we work together in Jesus name. So I took what you'd bought to the food bank before half term and then a few more late bits this week and they were very grateful. What you gave will make a big difference to people who really need help. Well done. I'm really proud of you all. Here are some pictures of what we collected. we're thinking about in kids church at the minute. Do you remember from last week where we started to look at the life of Abraham who was Noah's great 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 grandson? We thought about how God called him and how he had a plan for his life. We thought about how our plans don't always work out. In fact in last week's kids church you saw where my plans hadn't worked out. I said Ruth and Fran had gone away for the drama turned out it was Matt. Also something for me that wasn't in my plan was to come home from holiday and find the pumpkin from two weeks ago's kids church still on my desk and turning into compost. Yuck. 
What we do know, though, is what God plans, he completes and his plans do not go mushy on the desk. So you remember that when Abraham and Lot had separated, God had promised to give the land to Abraham's descendants, his children. But that Abraham didn't have any children and he was really old. Despite this, Abraham trusted God and knew that God would do what he said he would. Let's worship now the God that we can trust and rely on. Get up, sing, dance and worship.
a vision from God, where God told him that he would give him many blessings. Abraham asked God what good those blessings would be when he had no son to pass them on to, and they would end up going to someone who worked for Abraham. God said that wouldn't happen, that he was going to give Abraham a son. Then he took him outside and told him to count the stars. Have you ever tried to count the stars? I have. It's impossible. God had already told Abraham that his descendants would be like dust on the earth that couldn't be counted. I can't even count the dust that lives in my house. So God had promised Abraham's family would become huge, more than he could count. But then God made him wait. Have a watch of this. Mum, can I have lunch yet? Not just yet, Poppet. You need to wait a bit. It isn't lunchtime. How about a snack? I can't get at you at the minute. I'm busy washing up. Just wait till lunchtime. It won't be long. Mum, can we go to the park? Later on we can. You just need to wait a bit. Mum, is it my birthday soon? Not quite yet. You need to wait. What about Christmas? Is it Christmas yet? No, you need to wait for that as well. Well, can we put up the Christmas tree then? Not yet. We need to wait until December. OK, is it lunchtime now? No, still not lunchtime. You need to wait a bit longer. Mum, are we going on holiday soon? No, you have to wait until school finishes until we go on holiday. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's all you say. Well, I'm sorry, but sometimes in life we just have to wait for things. Mum, can my friend come over for a sleepover? Not at the minute. I'm afraid we've got to wait until lockdown's finished. Kay, open the Christmas chocolates, please. No, we need to wait for Christmas until those. Is it lunchtime now? No, but it will be soon. When is Strictly on? Can we watch it now? No, it isn't on till Saturday. You'll have to wait till then. I'm bored of waiting. I have to um wait for everything. Is it lunchtime now? No, still not yet. Wait patiently. Waiting is really hard. It is hard, yes, but it will be worth it. When all the things that you're waiting for happen, you are going to be so glad. All the best things are worth waiting for. But I hate waiting! I know you do, darling, but we all have to wait for things. But I'm not happy about that. I don't want to wait anymore. I know you don't. But you just will have to wait. I'm so excited for Christmas. Can you make it come even quicker? No, I'm afraid I have no control over the speed of time. I just can't wait any longer. Well, Esther, you will just have to wait for Christmas. But I do have some good news for you. Oh, what's that then, Mum? It's lunchtime now. When God told Abraham that he would make him a mighty nation, Abraham was around 75 years old. Now that is already old. Sarai was 65, so older than a lot of your grandparents. The years carried on going by. Abraham continued to believe what God had said. Do you like waiting for things? I don't. Well, it was 24 years later. So Abraham is now 99 and Sarai is 89. God appeared to Abraham and reminded him that he was going to give him a huge family. He also said he was going to change his name to Abraham. Imagine changing your name. Even when you're young, you get used to your name. So Abraham must have really been used to his name at 99. Well, the reason that God changed Abraham's name is because Abraham sounds like something that means father of many, a suitable name for what was coming. He also changed Sarai's name to Sarah. God told Abraham that he would have a son with Sarah and that they should call him Isaac and that we would be born in about a year's time. A bit later, Abraham was visited by three visitors. While Sarah was inside the tent preparing food for them, she overheard the visitors saying that when they returned in a year's time, Sarah and Abraham would have a son. Now this made Sarah laugh. 
She was almost 90 years old at this point, much too old to have a baby. A funny thing, though, about a year later, Sarah did have a baby and they called him Isaac. Another funny thing, the name Isaac actually means he laughs. God had done what he promised he would do. He gave Abraham and Sarah a son. There was also no doubt that it was because of God. 90 year olds do not give birth without a miracle. Abraham also showed his faith in believing that God would keep his promise. Let's worship now the God who keeps his promises. Get ready to sing and dance.
Christmas story is a pretty amazing one. Let's have a quick recap now of what we found out. So this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world, but people messed it up. God started the whole earth over again with an enormous flood, but he saved one guy and his family, and everything was good again. But after lots and lots of years, it seemed like not much had changed. People were still selfish. Still mean. And the world still wasn't how God wanted it to be. So God decided to fix everything that had gone wrong. With one very special family. That's where Abram comes in. Abram was an old man, 75. That's old. Before Abram even knew who God was, he heard him speaking to him. God told Abram to leave his home and go to a new country. Imagine if God told you to move far away, like tomorrow. To Canada. Or Uzbekistan. Well, Abram did it. He left his home and went where God told him to go. And God told Abram that he'll make him to a great nation. Which was a big deal because a great nation meant lots of kids. And grandkids. And great grandkids. But Abram didn't have any kids. Remember, he was 75. And that's pretty old. And his wife, Sarai, was 65. Kids never ask a woman how old she is. So God's promise seemed kind of unlikely. Not just unlikely. Impossible. But Abram believed. So he waited. And waited. <sighs> and waited some more. <sighs> For almost 25 years. And when Abram was 99 years old, God told him again that he would have a son. And as part of this promise, God changed Abram's name to Abraham. And Abraham's wife became Sarah. So Abram was now Abraham. And Sarai was Sarah. As a way for them to remember God's promise to them. The promise that they would have a son. God even told Abraham what to name his son. Isaac. And God said Isaac would have two sons of his own. Abraham's family would keep growing and growing and growing. Sarah still had a hard time believing this. She even laughed at God. She was 90 after all. But God always keeps his promises. And a year later, Isaac was born. And years and years later, another special baby was born to the same family. His name was Jesus. Have you heard of him? But just think, if Abraham had stayed home and ignored God, maybe none of that would happen. But that's another part of the story. The story about Abraham and Sarah is great, but what does it teach us about our lives today? Well, firstly, we're reminded that we can trust God, that he has a plan for our lives, and that what he has said he will do, he will do, even if that seems impossible. Secondly, we learn that sometimes God wants us to wait, but we wait knowing that God will complete his plans. We should still trust and believe during the wait. And the third thing we learn is about faith. Faith is one of those words that Christians often use, but don't always tell you what it means. Now, faith just means believing something that we can't see or explain. In order to believe in Jesus, we need to have faith. We need faith to believe that God keeps his promises. Abraham had faith that God could and would do something impossible, and he did. We need to put our faith, our belief and our trust, like Abraham did, in God and Jesus. We have a memory verse today from Proverbs 3 verse 5, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Let's say it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you have a plan for my life. Help me to be patient and wait for you to fulfil it. Thank you that I can trust you. You never break your promises. 
Thank you that you are mighty and can do things we think are impossible. Lord, give me faith like Abraham to trust you with every part of my life. Faith to know that you love me and want me to love you. Thank you, Lord, that I can depend on you and that you will never let me down. Amen. Well, that's it for another week. I'll see you next week when we start to have a look at the life of Isaac. So have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.